Hello everyone, uh, it's been quite a while but welcome to a new tutorial. Um, I got a partnership today from YouTube so hopefully I can be doing uh, now longer videos, don't need to cut them up and that was a big worry of mine, um, cutting videos up but now I can do hopefully longer tutorials and this is going to be my first one, it's going to be using a, a feature that you know some people overlook it, uh, don't even use um, especially when they need dynamic lighting it's it is quite handy so I'm just going to be showing that today so first off let's use the elliptical um, marquee tool and basically just start on a new layer and just pattern the design as you can see I've got my first color I did another circle to get the white and I've done another one to do the black so I'm just gonna do probably two more I think you can also hold alt or shift and it will make it a perfect circle let's get the bucket tool, change that to actually change it to the blue and now the last one will be white to finish it off okay go to black move that up that's not technically fully white and there we go just something very simple just like that okay so once you've got your design like I have uh, what we're gonna do is as you can see the background is a gradient background um, that I've put on go on to my gradient I'll show you the gradient is uh, so it's a dark dark blue um, and as well the light blue that I chose to be my design as you can see that's more up there so I haven't put it to the top of the image just put it a little further down um, when it's meeting the light in the dark anyway so that's kind of already got some light in as it's a gradient going from light to dark that's what uh, lighting does on an image and um, at the moment this hasn't really got anything on it I mean yeah you can change some brightness and contrast a little um, but it won't give you too much but I'm just gonna do a few things um, to start off and then I'm going to use one of these filters that people may overlook anyway so let's right click on the layer that we've just done do blend in options okay so the two we need to do or we could do three we need to do first an inner shadow click on that to change the parameters okay so we want to move that in and as you can see it's kind of looking like one of those buttons uh, that people can get as you can see from the shadow going in looks about right Line up a little there we go just change the size or opacity can change the blending mode as well that does work quite well um, but I usually keep it to multiply uh, on the inner shadow anyway let's go to drop shadow now as you can see the drop shadows here you can change the angle click on uh, the drop shadow name as you can see but it's mainly doing the whole thing so you can always change the angle accordingly ok let's change the opacity, I don't want too much, I just want it to stand out a little there we go something like that, about 30 just uh, I used 32 on that one so there we go inner shadow drop shadow definitely done we can use as well a bevel if we uh, change the size so it's quite a bit soften it a little change the depth a little and now we need to mess around with the multiplayer so that's the bottom one just do it so it's just starting to show and the top one is the highlight which is the white as you can see on the top where the light should be coming it should be coming from uh, in that direction so let's just do it so you just start seeing a bit of white something like that okay so there we go you can always change the, um, the angle as well and what it can do onto the image uh, if you change the gl uh, gloss contour but just leave it like that for now okay so it's that's nearly done we've done the first step and as you can see it's standing out and it does look like it could be on this image um, as a vector image you could have um, vector clouds going by and it would you know they would uh, work well together with the um, background image 
but it still hasn't got some any di any lighting across the middle, which is still looking very vector-ish. So what we're going to do is go on to filter, go to render, and go to lighting effects. Okay, so first one, move it along, move the point of origin, and maybe change the brightness. Okay, so this is going to only affect the um, button as that's on a separate layer which is handy so it doesn't mess around with the background it just acts lighting onto this image so you can see it even shows you a preview what it will do with that in the background but it won't touch the background because it's on a different layer as I've uh, stated so you can always change the gloss to make it more shiny or, or more metallic depending on what maybe item you're doing um, might do, I don't want to do too heavy so I'll do something like a, a 39 uh, using spotlight and then click OK and as you can see it's starting to uh, give give something to this image hopefully you can tell if I zoom in twice as you can see that's very close in and if I do edit um, undo can you see around there watch closely around uh, the bottom side of the image when I go back there you go. So just keep messing around with it. Go back to filter render, lighting effects. This time maybe make it a little closer. Maybe do it from the spin it around. Let's do it from the bottom to give some uh, glow. Something like that. So you just start seeing it's touching that image. Click OK. And that is kind of still dark. So what we're going to do again is go to filter, render, uh, light and effects. You can see it's very bright at the moment. Um, got to change point of origin to up there. This is going to be very bright. There we go. Something like that will work. What we can also do is now go on to our adjustments and then change our levels of brightness and contrast. Just going to change the brightness a little. Contrast attach to around 53 and 17 on contrast. And there we go. There's our image done. There's no getting away from it. It still looks, you know, it's still going to look vector. But it's it works um, on this uh, background, especially if you're gonna, you know, add other things to it like textures or whatnot. Um, it looks good, and it's where you know you can create dynamic buttons using this effect. You can also duplicate it, Gaussian blur. Mouse is going mental. Blur it quite a bit, about 4.5. Let's see what effect we can put on this. That one, lighten, blurs it a little, makes it glow, and there we go. The final image is uh, this one is just basically um, the tutorial is just to show off the lighting effects that you can use um, with that um, the lighting effects render or filter. Uh, people overlook it, people don't use it, and it's very, very handy. Um, it's not as powerful as obviously, you know, 3D lighting, um, but for Photoshop, it has to be used um, when you're lighting images. I think, anyway, I don't think you can do everything in the um, adjustments really. You can add quite, you know, you can add quite a lot and you can change it a bit, but I would always use this, especially if you want to change the point of origin of any lighting on a image. Anyway, so that's a very simple, uh, hopefully a very simple tutorial. Um, you can always write whatever you want, change the font to what have I got? I've got too much to be honest. It's quite a big, um, quite a big image this is. That's why it's kind of freezing on me. Let's change that to about 100. 
There we go, let's wipe that there. I'll go blend in options. Or the blue. Shadow just a little, and there you go. It's just very, I'm just adding something else onto it. But there you go, you can create a very dynamic button. But please, please um, use the, the lighting uh, options that are in Photoshop, the lighting effects, and uh, it's very handy. Anyway, more tutorials coming soon, and maybe put anything in the feedback or the comments or anything um, I usually do reply on any future tutorials you would like to see um, as I've got a partnership hopefully um, I've changed all the banners and stuff and they are working so I should be able to upload longer videos uh, maybe see uh, tell me things that you'd like to see maybe in this maybe in 3D uh, 3ds Max, Mudbox, ZBrush, whatever peace see you later